the University of Michigan Division of Gastroenterology and the Inflammatory Bowel Disease Program host the IBD Visiting Professor Lecture Series in Ann Arbor, Michigan. This series presents the latest in clinical research and basic science from IBD experts from around the world. Um, I wasn't really quite sure what to uh, talk about when Peter asked me to talk about my research because I don't really have anything uh, really new and exciting, I wouldn't say. So I've put together sort of a bit of a compilation of some of the things that I've done and uh, uh, then I'm going to end up with a few opinions on this which maybe I should just shut up about. but you're going to get my opinion. So you're going to have some evidence and some opinion. So I thought that I would talk about uh, the recurrence rates following surgery and the variables which may modify the risk, what surgeons can do to decrease the risk of recurrence, and then get into some of the things that I think are important as we talk about maintenance uh, therapy. Can you not hear me? Okay. So I'll just uh, talk louder then. And some of the issues that I think uh, are important uh, that we need to uh, deal with related to maintenance therapy. So generally, uh, surgery is reserved uh, for treating Crohn's disease, unlike ulcerative colitis, for treating the complications of the disease, and occasionally for failure of medical treatment. And I think that it's really important uh, to point out that multiple story studies have shown that uh, surgery usually results in excellent quality of life in patients. It eliminates the symptoms of complications. And although people uh, worry about uh, repeated operations, uh, rarely less than 1% of patients uh, have problems with short gut. And therefore, I think that it's important to point out that surgery should not be considered a failure, rather that we need to uh, think of the management of Crohn's disease as a multidisciplinary uh, disease and both medication and surgery have a role. However, we also need to realize that recurrence of disease following surgery occurs frequently and it, when it does occur it uh, impacts negatively on quality of life. So uh, to me this is really one of the important, very important issues in Crohn's disease uh, prevention or at least uh, treatment of uh, recurrence of uh, Crohn's disease. Now the recurrence rates, uh, probably most of you know this, it varies depending on uh, how we define recurrence, whether it's endoscopic, symptomatic or reoperative uh, rates. Uh, endoscopic rates of 75 to 90 percent have been reported at one year, uh, but I would say that uh, probably more reasonable or more important or what we would call severe lesions, say Rutgers uh, I2 or 3 and higher lesions, and they're seen in approximately 35 percent of patients at one year. Symptomatic recurrence rates varies from 7 to 25 percent at one year. Uh, patients really vary, but by five years approximately 50 percent will have clinical recurrence and reoperative rates for recurrence are somewhere around 3 to 5 percent. So uh, here's just a study that we did in the placebo group and you can see at five years about 50 percent of patients had uh, clinical or symptomatic recurrence. So certainly not a uh, small uh, uh, figure, you know, it's a significant problem. In fact with our gastroenterologists when I'm consulted to see a patient I always say um, it's not if the patient will need uh, surgery, it's when the patient will need the surgery. And uh, our gastroenterologist smiles at me and he says it's not if the disease will recur, it's when the re disease will recur. And I think those are really important things to remember. So uh, it's a little discouraging actually um, in predicting who's going to get uh, recurrence. Some of the things that have been looked at are the age of onset, the duration of the disease, whether granulomata are present, 
and those uh, I think everyone agrees are of no uh, um, predictive uh, value. Some uh, studies have suggested that ileal disease is more likely to occur or small bowel disease than colonic uh, disease uh, but that may also just be a function of the surgery as well. A number of resections in our studies that we've done that individuals who have had multiple resections are more likely to have a recurrence of Crohn's disease uh, but that has not been consistently uh, observed either. And then uh, I want to just talk a little bit about indication for surgery and genetic mutations. So uh, the pattern of disease, meaning whether the patient has inflammatory disease, stenosing or stricturing disease, or fistulizing disease, has been sort of a hot topic and whether you can predict who's going to get recurrence depending on the pattern of disease. And this is a meta-analysis of 13 non-randomized studies, which included about 3,000 uh, patients. And you can see here that the recurrent, they found that the recurrence rate was higher in the group having penetrating or fistulizing disease. And at reoperation, there was a concordance in the disease type, so that if you had fistulizing disease uh, as an indication in your first operation, it was likely that you would have it for the second uh, uh, operation. I have to say that, uh, I'll put my bias out there, I'm not certain that I really uh, believe these data. Uh, there is significant heterogeneity uh, in these uh, studies. But to me the most important factor as a surgeon is that um, I think how you classify the disease varies depending on the stage of the disease. And in fact, we did a uh, study where we had a group of international experts, gastroenterologists, who were experts in IBD, and we showed them a series of uh, cases, and we uh, asked them to classify them, whether it was penetrating, inflammatory, or stricturing, and the kappa for that, or the agreement, was about 0.29 and uh, suggesting that if the experts uh, have disagreement, you know that I'm not certain just how good this is, but uh, others feel that it does uh, make a difference. Uh, the other is uh, genetic abnormalities, and particularly NOD2 is the mutation that we know most about. Um, and in terms of recurrence, that there were a few studies uh, a few years ago that was suggested that those who had the NOD2 mutation uh, were more likely to have early postoperative recurrence and need for reoperation. Again, small numbers, retrospective studies. Um, more recently, though, there have been some studies that have refuted this or at least not supported this. So I think uh, the great hope in uh, with uh, the genetics of IBD that they still haven't been realized and um, we still have hope that we will be able to classify patterns of disease, but I don't think we're just right there. So in summary, I think that really a lot of things that uh, we hope could classify who's at high risk for developing recurrence uh, we haven't panned out and it's difficult uh, to ascertain or to predict who will have uh, early recurrence. So going on then, what can the surgeon do to decrease the risk of recurrence? And the first is uh, whether we do a stoma or do an anastomosis. And this is about the only thing that we can do as a surgeon that we can make a difference in terms of whether patients develop a recurrence. And this is uh, a study that we did, and you can see that after six years of follow-up, uh, none of the patients who had a total proctocolectomy had a recurrence, whereas somewhere about 60% of uh, individuals who had um, a seg segmental resection uh, had developed a recurrence. The problem with us, obviously, is that most patients, if they were given the choice of whether they were going to have a stoma or an anastomosis, they would probably take their chances and want to uh, have an anastomosis rather than a uh, stoma. Uh, furthermore, it only applies to those patients with uh, colonic disease uh, and not the vast majority of patients who have ileal or, or ileal colic disease. Uh, 